really delighted, Valerie, that you've taken some time to join with us. Uh, one of the things we've been trying to do as a chaplaincy is keep a focus and a spotlight on the mission partners that we work with. There's yourselves, there's Abana uh, out in Uganda, there's also the South Belfast Food Bank. Um, so you're uh, one of the driving forces, if not the driving force behind Wakisa, and we have sent teams out there over the last four years and have been part of the fundraising. So really delighted to have you here with us. Thank you. Um, Valerie, uh, a few things, I guess. Uh, with the impact of lockdown, Wakisa, uh, it strikes me, every May there's the Wakisa ball, and over in East Belfast you have the, the, the charity shop um, that, that is part of your fundraising. What's been the impact of lockdown on Wakisa here locally in, in Belfast? I'm assuming those two things are both gone. Yes, um, the, the charity shop had to close because the government said that we had to close and we did that because it was the right thing to do to keep people safe and stay at home. Um, so we're losing the, the money from that and then we will, the ball was to be this month that we're in and because all the hotels are closed and again because we can't have gatherings we've had to um, uh, cancel that as well. So we would be losing um, probably roughly maybe probably about 50,000 maybe wow. uh, with those two things, which is a lot of money, um, which is sort of half of our um, money that we need for the year uh, to run the centre. And the centre is still going on, of course, so we still need money for that. And then like a, like a lot of charities, um, you might have got people... So for instance, this time last year, whenever we were preparing to send a team out, with that team comes a lot of initiatives, people fundraising in local churches, some of us idiots did a bike ride, raised some money and so on. People might have ran marathons. So presumably you're, you're losing out a little bit in terms of just the wider networks of people who might be doing stuff in their own churches or their own sponsored events that to raise funds as well. Yes. Well, the like of the Hub, when they did the fundraising last year, um, that was a fundraiser which went to Wakisa. And then people who would be going out on teams this year We've had to cancel that. They would have done fundraising to bring money uh, to help the work as well. So all that has, has to be cancelled. Um, not just that, we usually bring a lot of clothes out for the babies yeah. and the girls. So we're not able to do that. Um, whether we can maybe send it out by cargo, I don't know, but it might be expensive. So we're trying to be wise with what money we have. Mm -hmm. um, they could maybe buy some of the clothes in the market for the babies, but again, that means that we would have to send money out for that because most of the clothes that we take out, 99% um, of them, we get them free. So it's not yeah. costing us anything. So yeah. that is one of the things that we would lose out um, and, and on teams doing fundraising for us. And Valerie, just, I mean, I suppose... <laughs> <laughs> I've simply just assumed and we'll put information out about what Wakisa is, but obviously you're working with young girls who are very vulnerable out in a centre uh, on the sort of Entebbe Road in Uganda um, who are pregnant. And um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play a little bit of a video that we took uh, last year to, to put some of that in context with the, the story of a young uh, girl out there named Vanessa. So I'm just going to play that now. Um, and then we'll come back in a little moment or two and talk about the work that's happening out there. Okay. My name is Ovina Magambe Vanessa. I'm age 16. I grew up from a small town in Kampala here. By the time I got pregnant, my parents were tough. I was helped by a certain organization called UN Action 8 was the pregnancy was between her family members. So I was brought to Wamkisa by the help of the two organizations. I reached to Wamkisa. I found many hardships because I couldn't forget my past life I passed through. I could remember what my dad did to me, many things I could remember. But by the help of the staff members, they gave me okay confidence to how to live a life without okay fearing, remembering the past life. So I started moving on like other girls as usual. So at one piece I've learned a lot of things. Tailoring, hairdressing, even though that was not my dream. 
my dream was to become a better surgeon because in our country we need many surgeons. So I wanted to become one of those and the most intelligent one. But I saw when my dream was shattered, I decided to leave to Ankisa and move on as life goes on. So I started moving on. I've got a bright future. Many things I've learned from people around us, especially our donors. I've trained us a lot. They have given us hope, care. It's like I'm now a better person. I know what I should be. So if you get pregnant, it's not the end of the world. You can get a better future if you believe in the Almighty. So when I, I started trusting the Lord, my way was opened. Even though I had many hardships, but now I'm okay. So that was a little bit of Vanessa's story and Wakisa's working with those young girls out in Uganda in the Wakisa Centre. You've got a nursery, a primary school, you house the girls, you train them and so on. Um, Valerie, what's been the impact on the, uh, in, in Uganda of coronavirus and uh, are they under lockdown uh, and so on? Do you want to fill us out uh, with what's happened there? Yes, they're locked down uh, as well as us, but in fact, they're a bit worse than us because they're not allowed any transport on the roads. Okay. So if they need to go to get food for the centre, they have to walk, and then they try and get a, a motorbike to bring uh, the food back when the girls get it at the market. Um, also, hospital, we're not allowed vehicles on the road, so if a girl goes into labour, we have to get them there. You can't wait on the ambulance so that can be very difficult as well because sometimes the ambulance doesn't come at all so they're not allowed out on the roads they've got very strict um so but again we're, we are looking after the girls and making sure they're fed uh, their medical they have to have their medical bills paid so that's another expense but the hospitals out there don't do anything for nothing not yeah. like here we've got a lot to be thankful for we have to pay for everything. So if they, they go to the hospital at all for anything, it has to be paid for. So those medical bills come in every month and um, the Lord provides the money through people like yourselves who support the work. Well, you know, I mean, you've just mentioned there, you know, we have so much to be thankful for. I mean, we have an NHS, we have uh, the government stepping in and doing the job retention scheme um, that's going to help give people an income. I mean, it sounds like, you know, I mean, for a charity like yourself that's operating, doing an absolutely amazing job, but doing it year to year, hand to mouth, you know, trying to meet the bills. And, and, and I've chatted with you and Fred about how, you know, God has provided almost to the penny at times for, for the needs that, that you guys are facing. But I mean, you're quite literally, all of your outgoings are still going out, but an awful lot of the incomings won't be coming in right now. How could people support that in a very practical way? Well, they, they could give to the, um, we're going to have something on the website that yeah. people could just click in and give it that way. Or if they want to maybe do some like walking, like, you know, get other people, friends of theirs and walk separately because of uh, this self-isolation and because you have to keep apart from everybody. You could do a fundraiser like that, do so many miles each day and get people to support you. You could probably even have a coffee morning, you know, on the Facebook or Zoom or whatever among yeah. your friends. Um, you could do lots of things like that. Um, that uh, and then even a bike ride. There's a, I know of somebody in a charity, they did a bike ride so many miles each day and then it added up and they got their friends to um, support us. Exercise is good for everybody. So even if you only walk a few miles a day, even even no matter about the fundraising, it's good for your health. So yeah. get out there and do a bit <laughs> of exercise for your own self. Never mind, Wakisa. Well, look, so we're, we put the website link up um, so that people can access directly there. And also you've, you've, given us, you've given us all some food for thought. People could take that away individually, you know, do something, uh, 
you know, by yourself, go for it, people. Don't be waiting for the hub to organize anything. But equally, you know, we want to be thinking about how we might, uh, as a chaplaincy, gather around yourselves in Havana and the food bank. And so we're going to have to get our heads around that in a sort of coronavirus world and in a lockdown <laughs> world and however we, we come out of that. Bali, what about um, just finally, I mean, you do have plans for the future and hopes for the future at Wakisa and uh, some exciting things that are on pause right now, but, you know, you're still planning and, and looking to to the future and for those things to, to get up and running again. Do you want to tell us just a, a little bit about that? Yes, we're planning to, God willing, to build a primary school and um, we've been we've got a little bit of money at the side to start it with the land all cleared, ready to, to build. So that is, we would like, because we have a... Pr- primary um, or secondary? No, a primary school yep, yep. because we have the, we have the nursery, Great. right? We have the nursery for the kids who would come. It's about 60 every morning, comes in um, from, say, four-year-old to seven-year-old. So then they will move up into the primary school. And we hope to have, like, seven class classrooms, roughly about maybe 200 uh, pupils at it. Um, and it means then that our own children that have come through the centre with their mummies that have been born with, you know, to do with Makisa, they can go to school and that will save money you know because they wouldn't have the money to go to school plus people from the villages will go as well they've been asking us in the villages to to build a school first of all they asked us to do the primary school because for years they asked us and then we felt that was the the right time came and we did that and there actually has been a waiting list for the for the nursery school and i believe that there will be support for the primary school as well And not just having the school. The main reason of the school is to teach them God's word every day and to teach them the gospel. And that's what's the most important thing, no matter about anything else. Brilliant. Valerie, do you know what? We'll we'll leave that there, but we're we're gonna um we'll be keeping Makisa in our hearts and minds, we're keeping you in our hearts and minds. Let's stay connected and let's make sure that this relationship, this partnership with one another and and the blessing that you've been to us and the way that you have opened up your doors to our students and our church and our community and invited us into your work out there and allowed us to be a part of that and, and God willing, hopefully maybe a bit of encouragement that we've been to you as well. But we're really appreciative of you and everything that we're yeah. doing and we're, we're, we're going, to keep, going to keep this going and we'll, we'll stay in touch. Can I just say that Fred and Sharon and myself want to thank you uh, especially yourself and the folks at the hub for all the support that you've given us and may God bless you in the work that you do there as well well you're very kind listen Valerie thank you so much and, uh, not at all we'll, God bless uh, you. And you're, you're looking great so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep <laughs> getting, her needs cut <laughs> well mine right. doesn't <laughs> I know you're I, okay <laughs> I just went with the clippers listen you take care God bless yes you too tell right. everybody send everybody my love well all done. right all right. Bye. God bless. Bye. Bye.